Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to talk about three different ways to bevel plates. Uh, so whether you're in the shop or the field, you know, and what you have access to is going to play a major factor in that. But I just want to show you uh, three different types or three different methods of getting the same end result. And then we can talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each process along the way. So first we're going to start off with the oxyacetylene. Uh, then we're going to move into a grinder with a, uh, a heavy abrasive disc. And then finally, we're going to talk about going through and doing some beveling with a mechanical beveler. So let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start off the OxyFuel torch. So with OxyFuel, and it doesn't matter whether you're using polypropylene, propane, or acetylene, or any other type of fuel source, you're only going to be able to cut ferrous material. Ferrous means it contains iron or heavy amounts of iron because, as we've discussed in previous videos, oxyacetylene cutting is a chemical reaction. Okay, it does. Uh, essentially an accelerated rusting process. So we have to have iron in that. So that kind of rules out any of our uh, brass, copper, aluminum, uh, stainless steel. You wouldn't be able to do any of that, but it works great on steel, very effective. Some of the advantages are portability because everything's self-contained. So wherever you can get the bottles, wherever you can get your hose and your torch, you're gonna be able to do beveling and cutting in that fashion. So let's go ahead and make a couple cuts on here and then we'll talk about some of the disadvantages. All right, so as you can see with oxy fuel cutting, it works well. However, there are some inconsistencies in the cut. And then I would imagine that if I put a protractor up against there, angle's relatively close for freehanding it. Obviously, you can use a track cutter to improve accuracy and speeds and repeatability on your cuts. But then we're looking at additional expenses. And sometimes they're kind of pain in butt to drag around the job site, they get heavy. Uh, but if you're working in the shop, that shouldn't be an issue. I would recommend if you're going to be doing any flame cutting and you want to get the consistent results, go ahead and use a track cutter. Again, it's, uh, you're adding some additional expense to that. In addition, we have some post-cut cleanup. I have a little dross on here that I have to get rid of. So I'm going to have to use a grinder on this to clean that angle up and then get rid of that dross. So that's oxyacetylene. Let's go ahead and move into an abrasive wheel. Okay, so up next, we're going to go ahead and talk about abrasives. Abrasives is another great way to bevel plate. You can do this on steel, stainless, aluminum, whatever type of material, but like I said, just keep using it on the similar material. If I use this on aluminum, that's all I want to use it for. If it's done on steel, I don't want to cross-contaminate and start you know, grinding or beveling on stainless steel with this wheel. I'm going to go ahead and use the, uh, the Ferd Victigrain. This stuff removes a lot of stock, very little effort, and very re uh, reduced time rate. So we're going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to attempt to get another 22 and a half degree bevel on this. Uh, let's see how we do. All right, so as you can see, we got a nice clean edge, so improved cut quality than uh, what we did with OxyFuel. Although with OxyFuel, we'd be able to cut that off and then hit it with a grinder. I've just taken that additional step out of this process. So it's pretty quick with the, uh, the Victigrain disc. Works pretty efficient, but if I had long sections of this stuff to do, probably wouldn't be the best method. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the nibbler. Okay, so this is a nibbler. Uh, so essentially what this does is it allows me to bevel plate mechanically. It's nice portable, it's not too heavy. Uh, I'll be able to take off all the stock that I need to to get a good bevel on here. So I set the bevel, so that's going to give me improved accuracy, improved speed, and less wear and tear on my body. What I'm going to do is I can set the cut depth. First I'm going to take off about 3 16 of an inch all the way across, and then I'll pull off the remaining stock. You could probably do, you could do 3 8 all in one fell swoop, but uh, to get a nice cleaner bevel, we're going to go ahead and just remove a, a smaller amount on the last pass. We're going to take off a good chunk the first time. Second pass, we're going to go ahead and get it all cleaned up and then should be ready to weld. So with this dial up here, I can simply raise and lower the, the cutting attachment that's on the inside. So that's what's going to allow me to improve my accuracy as well because I can, I can actually dial in exactly how much stock I want to remove with each pass. Now this is all in metric. So my friends across the pond are going to love that aspect of it. Standard people, we're going to have to go through and figure out the metric equivalent. So it's not too bad. About three millimeters equals an eighth of an inch. So for a three-eighths plate, you can actually set this to nine or nine millimeters, and you can take it all out in one fell swoop. These cutting bits right here, these are replaceable. So that's an advantage. You can actually, each blade has four cutting edges on it, so you can rotate each one through. Now, this is a universal set, but there's also aluminum and stainless uh, cutters as well. But this will work, these universal ones will work on steel, stainless, and aluminum. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of stainless steel or a lot of aluminum, I would highly recommend switching over to the appropriate cutting bits for that. All right, so as you can see, we got a nice clean cut here. Let's go ahead and check 
the accuracy of the bevel. Okay, so it looks like we're right at our 22 and a half degrees. So we've got improved accuracy overall. Speed seems to be a lot better. And then compared to using a grinder, I'm not wearing out my arms all day. So if you have longer sex, I mean, this is just a six inch coupon. But, you know, if you have 15, 20 feet or better of weld, I would highly recommend using a nibbler over a grinder, obviously, or even a track torch. This is gonna to be a much faster. I have less cleanup to do afterwards once the cutting's done. All I have to do at this point is remove the mill scale and uh, clean up the back and we're ready to go. All right, so obviously some of the disadvantages we're gonna face with this is price point. This one right here goes for about $2,500. Uh, it does have a smaller version or a little brother if you want that goes for about 1,800 bucks. They're both available on Amazon. If you guys are interested, we'll drop a link down in the bottom. Uh, what I like about it is the accuracy. So it's a lot more accurate than trying to run it with a grinder. There's gonna be a lot less fatigue associated with it. Anybody that's ran a grinder for any amount of time, you know, if you run that thing six, eight hours a day, it just starts tearing up your forearms, your hands start going numb. You're not gonna have that. All the weight is actually on the plate that you're cutting. So you're just, you know, pulling the trigger and pushing along and then making the adjustments, you know, as you make each cut. Uh, the big difference between the smaller version of this and this one here is the cutting depth. So if you're gonna do bigger, thicker, heavier plate, I would recommend this one. Uh, the other one would be good, you know, up to, I'd have to look at the specs on it, but I'd say you could at least clear three eighths of an inch. So for my money, you know, if I had the money, uh, this is what I would pick up because like I said, in increased accuracy, increased speed, uh, and then repeatable cuts. And then you could train somebody on this in just a couple of minutes. And it's a lot safer than using a grinder. Everybody knows the first thing you do when you get a grinder is throw away the guard, right? Um, so I actually can't get my hands into the working components of this tool while it's in operation. So it's gonna be a lot safer too. So it can also cut aluminum and stainless steel. So depending on the type of materials you're gonna cut, obviously that's gonna rule out the oxy fuel setup and then you're gonna be stuck with a grinder or this or some other mechanical type of process. But I would highly recommend going with a plate beveler if you have a lot of beveled plates that you have to do. All right guys, so that's just a couple of different ways you can go ahead and bevel plate. Go ahead and tell us which method you prefer down in the comment section. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, feel free to drop them in the comments. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for the help and support. Uh, we definitely appreciate all that you guys do for us. Till next time, make every well better than your last.